Hey guys, welcome back to the video. Today we're talking about things that you should know before you start smoking cigars. All next on the Zeal Cigar Review. Yeah. Yeah. Right, come and never sleep on me. I some change, so you know I go get what you're looking at. Full nine noon, hoodie monk on it. Go find your comfort from another, yeah. All right, JB, my guess is you've been smoking cigars how long? Ooh. Oh. I can't do that math. Gotta do that math. Carry the one. What is it? How long you been smoking cigars, man? 12 years. 12 years? No. I've... Holy oh. sh... Look, look, what's happening right now? I, I gotta redo the math. Okay. It's public school time. Add three more years. Add three more years? Okay. That would be 15, right? 12 plus 3 is 15. Yeah. Am I correct? So okay. 15 so years. 15 years. Okay. I've been smoking over 20 years, and... We've been smoking cigars for a long time, and we're one of the people who you probably watch smoke cigars. Today, we're going to be talking about things that you should know before you get into cigars. So if you're running across this channel and you're brand new to smoking cigars or you're thinking about getting into smoking cigars, we got some tips and tricks that might really help you. And some of the things we're going to tell you are things that nobody else is going to tell you about cigars. Before we talk about that, we have two cigars in front of us that we have to cut, light, and smoke. What are you smoking today, JB? I just grabbed a little trailblazer. A little trailblazer. A little ZHB special. I am smoking Alec Bradley's Connecticut. Dude, look how far away I can light this cigar with this thing. I'll tell you what, Kevin Shahan's getting a heck of a lot of play out of this stupid torch. Look at this thing. I know, dude. From deep, You bro. can weld with that thing. It's crazy. You could probably use this as a self-defense item, like a flamethrower. Yeah. Kevin, you carry this in your waistband down there in Florida, don't you? I'm sure they Get do. Get away, Gator! <laughs> We know many of you guys have smoked cigars for a while, or you have somebody you're thinking about inviting into... Uh, the great hobby of smoking cigars and the great habit or lifestyle of smoking cigars. And we want to give you some tips before you do that of things that you might want to warn them about or if you're thinking about getting into cigars yourself, the things you might want to be aware of before you get into them. So, so let's start out with tip number one. First off, whoever brings you into the cigar culture typically is somebody that you stay with for a very long time. Hmm. We know that we've been, been a part of people's cigar journeys and the other cigar influencers out there. But I want to tell you this, separate yourself from us, separate yourself from other guys who are influencers that brought you in and carve your own path. Make the cigars that you smoke your own, not because we tell you to smoke cigars or some other person tells you to smoke cigars, but you smoke what you like and you'll find that as you carve your own path, you're gonna find cigars that you really, really enjoy. Because people tend to listen to influencers and cigar personalities on YouTube, like ourselves, they tend to get stuck in one type of cigar thing. We find that happening with a lot of people out there. Some people are like, you know, I'm, I'm a ZHB guy, I only smoke ZHBs. I'm like, actually there's other kind of cigars out there, or I'm, I'm a boutique guy, I only smoke boutiques. Roma Craft, Saka, all that kind of stuff. That's only what I do. Tatawahe, Pete Johnson fan. They're literally wanting to uh, have a big tattoo of Pete Johnson like Pete has on his arms of anything, right? They just worship those Wait, guys. he has a tattoo of himself on his arm? No. Oh, okay. But they would probably get a tattoo of Pete Johnson on their arm. So We actually have customers that come in here and call themselves label hoes. Oh. Self, self, self-labeled. Self label hoes. You don't want to be a label hoe. <laughs> you don't want to be a label hoe. And I'll say this because... A lot of times people forget that cigars have been around for hundreds of years and there are people that are, are vintage companies that make really good cigars like your Romeos, like your Monte Cristos, like your Macanudos. Yeah, you don't have to be a label hoe. You can actually go out, out of the box and uh, if you are boutiques only or you've been introduced to boutiques, there's nothing wrong with that. But make sure you go outside the confines of the box that got you here to this point where you have loved cigars in the lifestyle that we're in. Make sure you go outside those influencers that you watch, including us, and try other cigars that maybe other people suggest to you here and there. It's definitely well worth it. So number one, go outside the box that got you here. Number two is really easy. When you decide on what cigar that you want, there's usually three factors. JB, what are those three factors? Well, first, one of the first things I think people are gonna, gonna look at is gonna be the flavor, right? Right, number um, one, yeah, number one. Let me ask you, Chris, let me go back on this. If they don't know the flavor, and they're trying to find find a cigar that fits their palate, what should they do? Ask. Ask. Ask who? Well, hopefully the person working at the shop you're going to knows. Exactly. Exactly. You, the cigar shop that you walk into and that you shop at, their staff should be knowledgeable and friendly and willing to help you find the cigar that you like. If they don't, run quickly away from that shop because they're giving all of us a terrible name in the industry. There's plenty of those shops out there. But 
There's also plenty of shops that are there for customer service and ready to help you find the cigar that you like. I think another one people right now specifically are really focused on, especially if they're getting into the industry, is okay. uh, a price. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I, one of the first things I did when I started smoking cigars was I didn't want to spend a lot of money on them because I wasn't sure, mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, you don't want to make that big of an investment if it's not something that you're right. really going to enjoy, right? So right, I wasn't right. like, well, I don't want to buy the, like, the box. 20 right. cigars. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or, like, even, like, $10 cigars at first because I'm a little skeptical of whether or not that money is going to be spent well. 100%. So you want to be careful on the price necessarily, but you don't have to buy 20 cigars. No. You could buy a sampler pack. You could buy just a simple, like, five pack or a fresh pack. You could also buy just a single cigar, oh. you know, recommended by the, you know, B&M. And then I think once you get those two things kind of narrowed down, you start looking at, uh, you can look at strength a little bit more once you figure out, mm, once yeah. you figure out what your flavor is, you can kind of figure out, you can start figuring out how far, you know, strong you can go with it or if you need to stay lighter. When you say strength, what do you mean by that? When someone says well, this cigar is strong, what do they mean by that typically? Typically, that means it's got some sort of like a, a nicotine buzz to it. Mm -hmm. Or it nicotine can make you or sick or dizzy or when you stand up too fast, you're like, whoa. I think you can break strength into two different categories. Uh, one would definitely be the nicotine. That's a little bit subjective, if you would. Nicotine yeah. would be. But the other part of strength isn't subjective, and that would be like the pepper in a cigar. Yeah. You know, so if you think about nicotine, that's a little bit subjective because let's say you're drinking a Coca-Cola, it's usually going to stave off a lot of the nicotine, uh, or you're drinking plenty of water with it, it's usually going to stave off a little of the nicotine or the effect on you. But when it comes to pepper, all of us taste the same pepper, typically. Yeah. We all, we all taste the same pepper. So I, I think for me, if I was a beginning smoker, mm -hmm. it would be off-putting to maybe get a cigar that has a really strong pepper note. Mm-hmm. But it would be worse to get a cigar that was overly strong and made me sick. Okay, yeah, You see yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, now, yeah, now yeah. sometimes they go hand in hand, right? Sure, get, sure, sure. two for one, but... Right, right. I think for me, I would, I would, rather, I would rather smoke a cigar that was like a little bit stronger in the mouth and off-putting than mm -hmm. something like the, sh the champagne that can sneak up on you, like the Perdomo right. champagne can oh, sneak sure. up on you. Absolutely, so, absolutely. I don't know. That's just me, though. Tip number three is really, really important, and that is where you smoke will often determine your enjoyability of the cigar culture. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, if you smoke outside and you're surrounded by lots of trees and nature and everything like that, you're gonna have different smells impeding what you're smoking at that point, which is not bad necessarily. Like being outside in nature and, and you know, like when you're fishing or boating or something like that, I love smoking a cigar during those times, but I will tell you, when I catch a fish, it definitely impedes the smell of the cigar. Okay, it really does. That's why I don't take really, really good tasting or like very expensive cigars when I'm fishing or maybe even golfing yeah. in the same way. Because, you know, when I'm golfing, I'm kind of focusing on golf and, and cigars kind of like an, a, an afterthought for me. But when I really want to smoke something and I really want to enjoy it and I really want to think about the notes and really contemplate with a cigar, I will smoke in a lounge or okay. I'll smoke inside. And it'll be a very, very different thing than smoking outside. So I'll, I'll take it a step further and even go like, okay. um, you know, some of the lounges that you experience the first time you go in and smoke mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or the group setting that you're in the first time you smoke. Like yep. every single one of those uh, can, you know, the company that you carry, right? Like if you're smoking by yourself versus if you're smoking with a group of people that's having a conversation. Correct. If you're Correct. smoking watching a football game versus just smoking watching the sun go down. Absolutely. All those things are going to have a different experience. Like, Absolutely. Attached to it. And when you smoke with more people... There's more sense involved. Yeah, you yeah, smoke yeah. in a small lounge versus a large round lounge. Uh, also, if you smoke in a well aerated place versus a place that's like I've done this before and it's one of the worst experiences of my entire life smoking cigars. I went to a local lounge that was having a poker tournament and the and the owner of the lounge was like, hey, why don't you come play poker with us? And so I went. It was back in Ohio. Yeah. And I went to play poker and there was ten people in like a lounge area smaller than what we half the size of ours huh half the size of, and we have a smaller lounge it's about what 500 600 square feet okay half the size of that little poker table we're all we're all settled around it and literally we're all smoking cigars and i get wretchedly sick wretchedly sick because i can't focus on poker there's because no, there's no oxygen there in wasn't there, you know and i'm like can we turn on a fan or something maybe open a door and they're like yeah and these people do this every friday night and i was like i'm not doing this again just you know so it ruined my cigar experience at that time Ooh. 
and that kind of leads us to number four. We kind of blended the two, which is which is the company. Who you smoke with mm. can greatly increase the pleasure of smoking, right? So Absolutely. three and four kind of go together, the where and who. 100%, 100%. You, what you'll find when you get into cigars, guys, sometimes you get a whole new crew of people that you find at different places. Maybe you go to a certain lounge or a certain shop, and you, you frequent different ones, and you find different people there, and you kind of get a little crew together, and you guys tend to smoke this day at this shop or this day at that shop which is really kind of fun and really kind of cool and we we see many people that come around even to our shop that go to different shops and they they have a same crew if you would you kind of get uh invited if you would into this culture and this lifestyle by other people and you get more friends which is kind of fun be open to that be open to making new friends and uh, new experiences in particular when you are getting into cigars yeah. uh the, the fifth one's kind of funny man okay because th this is this is the one that, that that we see the most i would say right Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. As, especially I forgot what business. I wrote down, so I just looked at it. Okay. What is it now? The fifth one is good. It's a, a great majority of culture is going to be against you on this. Yeah, you have to have thick skin being a cigar smoker. Non cancer. You, you just do. Oh, my gosh, dude. You got to have thick skin being a, being a uh, cigar smoker by nature of the fact that there are a lot of people out there that think cigars are as dangerous as cigarettes. And there is some risk, to be sure, with cigars, but not nearly to the degree as it is with cigarettes or like dipping tobacco, if you would. So. I want you to understand that, like, when you smoke cigars and you take some, you know, you're, you're expressing your free will to enjoy some fine tobacco, you will find haters out there once in a while. You will find people, particularly if you post this on your social media, you will find people that just inundate you with their uh, purposeful, irritating concern for your influence on culture in general. Let's just say that. So with that said, if you're going to smoke cigars, fellas and fellettes, you definitely want to have a little bit of thick skin. But that's our five things. Did we miss something? Did we leave something out? Is there something that you really wanted to say? Drop a comment below because we want to hear what you have to say about the things that we just said. So with that said, this has been the Zeal Cigar Review. I'm Bradley. This is JB. And we are out of here like last year. Peace.